Welcome to the webinar on Creating Recipes in iOS Switch Control. This is Kristen Leslie, and we're going to be looking at how to create some custom gestures and how to control some app-driven toys uh, to allow our students that have physical disabilities who need to use switches to allow them to interact with more um, apps than they may be that, than are switch accessible. So we have some apps that are switch accessible and some that aren't built that way. But now that we have recipes, we can uh, create some custom gestures to allow access. So recipes became available with iOS 9, so they've been around a while now, and they allow the switch user to temporarily assign specific action or, or behavior, certain touches to the iPad. Uh, instead of scanning through items or apps, you're actually creating a gesture so that when you hit that switch, that gesture is performed. So you'll need an iPad or an iPhone. You'll need a Bluetooth interface, or it could be a wired interface. There are a few that would work. And then uh, switches or a switch, depending on what, what you need to use or your student needs to use, and then the app you want to access or the function that you want to do on the iPad, the, the, the gesture that you want to do. You need to have that in mind or have the specific app you want to use. Also, having tracing paper on hand, if you're going to kind of be outlining um, on that tracing paper what uh, gestures need to happen, uh, that can be handy as well, and we'll see that uh, later in the pre presentation. For my setup today, I have the Bluetooth Bluetooth switch from AbleNet. And you can plug in alternative switches to the, this switch, but it has the two switches on top that you can use for testing out as you're setting things up. And then when you're working with a student, you can plug in whatever switches they need to use, the head switch, uh, the different kind of switches they need to use. But you'll need some, some kind of interface that's communicating with those switches. There's a few things you'll want to do before using switch control, and that's not just related to recipes, but in general, there's a few things you want to set up uh, to be more successful. Um, specifically, the first one to set up an accessibility shortcut. I'm going to demonstrate that uh, real quick for those of you who haven't done that before. Let me share my screen and just show you where this is going to be. So within settings, and certainly give me feedback in the chat window, those of you who can see the screen, let me know. Um, if you're not seeing the iPad screen, I've just opened up settings and was going to show you how to set up an, an accessibility shortcut. So I'm on general, accessibility, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of accessibility and you see accessibility shortcut. If I click on that, there's many options I could choose. You see that I have switch control selected. There's a check mark by switch control. You want that shortcut set up so that you can quickly exit switch control and enter switch control. So you can turn it on and turn it off by triple clicking the home button so that you don't get stuck within switch control. So all I would need to do to start switch access at this point would be triple click the home button. So when I get to that point, I'll know that I have that. So another helpful thing to set up when you're going to be setting up recipes is within general and accessibility, going to switch control, which is towards the bottom. I'm going to move my mouse. You'll see tap behavior towards the bottom. Whenever you're working with a student that is uh, using a recipe or um, are an early switch user, you're going to want it to be set at always tap. I think by um, the default, uh, yeah, the default will normally be selected, but you'll want always tap selected. And that just prevents uh, some complex menus uh, from coming up so that it's just selecting or doing the function that we want it to do when the switch is touched, instead of going to some menus that the student has to you know, go work their way through. That's for higher level switch users. 
So we have those two things done. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint for a moment. And I'll be sending you this PowerPoint as well as a little a handout uh, with some links after the webinar. Okay, so we, once we've done that, um, just want to mention that we are using Bluetooth for the switch interface. And I'm using Bluetooth also uh, for a toy that I have today that I'm going to be uh, showing you how to set up. So definitely on the iPad you're using, the Bluetooth needs to be on. And if you're having trouble connecting to your switch interface, I have some tips here on the screen to help you problem solve that. So I thought I'd include that. Uh, let me just, for those who are new to this piece, let me just quickly show you on the screen. At the very top left-hand side, you see Bluetooth and it's off. So I'm going to want to click on that and then turn it on. When I do that, it's searching for my devices and saying they're not connected, but they're there. So I can click on the one that I want to be connected and then wait for that connecting to happen. And if it doesn't happen, then we'll go through some of the problem solving steps. And so that we can demonstrate what we want to demonstrate. It's Bluetooth is unsuccessful. I've only used it today about 10 times successfully. So you know that when you're going to present, it's going to say that it's not successful. So let's go back to the tips. And I'm going to be doing these things right now to see if I can get this to connect. So. These are the items. I'm going to forget the device. I'm going to turn off the Bluetooth device, turn it back on. Um, I might need to switch off my iPad, which I hope not, because that takes a little bit of time. Make sure my device is charged, these kinds of things. Let's go back to sharing, and I'll get going on some of these, these things. OK, so I'm going to go to Info, forget this device, and say OK. So now you don't see the Bluetooth up there those of you viewing. I'm looking at my device. It's on. The light is showing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off Bluetooth and turn it back on again. Now, one other thing that can be happening, which I can you know, check a few other devices I have around me, and it's good for you to know this as well, uh, make sure that your Bluetooth is not connected to another device. So I'm going to go look at that. And it looks like on my other iPad it's not on. Thanks for your patience as I problem solve through this. I'm going to look on my iPhone and turn my Bluetooth off. OK. Now I'm going to click on Bluetooth again and see if I can get it to connect. There, it connected. So I just had to go through some troubleshooting. Um, I would say. I, I don't have to do this very often, but I'm, I'm glad we walked through it for you all. Usually they connect right away. So our Bluetooth is connected. Let's go back to our slide here. OK. Before we set up a recipe, you still need to set up your switches. So you ha still need to have switches available in order to set up the, the recipe. Uh, so when we go to do that, um, we're going to general accessibility to switch control. And we're tapping on switches, and we say choose an, uh, add a new switch. And when we add a new switch, it's going to ask us if we're using an external switch, uh, which would be the one with the Bluetooth, or if we're using the screen as a switch. You can even use the camera as a switch with a turning to the left or turning to the right. So it asks you these questions, and it will ask you to name the switch. You need to go through that process to have switches available uh, for use. So I'll show you on my iPad what that looks like as far as my switches that are already uh, set up so that you can see where that is. OK, so I'm in general and accessibility, and you see I Press switch control. And besides switches, it says three, which means I have three switches set up already, using the full screen as a switch, 
Um, I have a, one for scan, one for select, and then I have add a new switch. So if you have no switches there, you would use your Bluetooth and you'd add a switch and you'd give them a name um, as I've named mine scan and select. Um, so just make sure they could be called switch one and switch two or white switch or orange switch, whatever you want to call it. They just need a name and you give it a function. And that just is so that you have a switch when you're setting up the recipe that you have something to select from. It wants to know what switch you're using. So all of that is set up. So I put some um, recipe cards um, with some different recipes. One's for turning pages, um, and there's another for um, accessing something like sensory light box or fireworks. Um, and then I have one thing I want at the end for playing music. Um, so I'm just going to show you on the iPad how you would um, activate the recipe for turning pages. I'll share my screen again. All right, so again, I'm under general, accessibility, and then switch control. And right under switches, where I have my three switches, there's recipes, and it says five, which means I have five recipes created. The iPad comes with at least two of these already set up. One is tap the middle of the screen. That can be useful for pausing and playing video. So if you open up YouTube full screen um, and there's a YouTube kids video they're watching, they can pause and play if you set up the recipe, tap, tap the middle of the screen. Um, so you see these recipes I have here. Turning pages is also one that comes with, uh, on your iPad. Then these others I've created, the monster, the fireworks, stars, and then I, have, I can create a new recipe. If I wanted to launch a recipe, which right now I want to launch turning pages to show you, then I would just go to launch recipe and I would choose turning pages. All right? So now we're going to open up an iBook and see how our switches would work. So our Bluetooth is already connected. We know that that's working. Uh, we already have our switches set up. Now I'm going to be launching this, this uh, turning pages. Because we set up the shortcut to triple click and switch control comes on, um, we can just navigate right now by click, hitting the home button, navigate to iBooks, and oh, I have Pete the Cat already opened up here. So that works out nicely. And so now I can try to launch by triple clicking the home button. When I do that, watch the screen and you should see it launch the turning pages recipe. So your switches are configured to turning pages. So now um, I have my white and orange switch that you saw earlier. And I can touch one to go back and one to go forward. I'm going to go ahead and have it start reading, and now I'm going to touch my switch. So I turn the page. Touching the switch again, and again. Okay, so you're probably seeing the words highlight as it's reading. When I plug my iPad in to display my screen, um, the volume does not go with it. So the volume doesn't play, but it doesn't go through the computer. So for, with this particular book, the Pete the Cat story would be reading. And then I could go back by touching the, the other switch, and it turns the page back, or forward. All right, so then if I turn the page again with the switch. I love my white shoes. 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 I love now we're all going to be stuck on that today. 
um, I got the volume to work because I, pl I played it on my iPhone. So um, I'm kind of jerry-rigging things today. I've got a, the sound on my iPhone and the visual on my iPad. Um, so that's the turning pages, and that was very simple. I didn't really need to set anything up. Let's go back to recipes, so settings and general and accessibility and switch control. And I'm going to go back to my recipes. So the middle of the screen I mentioned could be for pausing and playing videos, turning the pages, turning the pages of a book, basically swipes um, left and right for turning page forward or going back, and you use two switches um, then for that in, in this. Um, then um, the monster one is one I created, but let's do the fireworks one. So say there's an app like fireworks um, where typically a child would uh, run their finger all around the iPad and have the fireworks go off. Um, some of you may have seen sensory light box. Um, same kind of thing. So I'll open up one of those and we'll be launching the fireworks recipe. And all that means is I set up a gesture where my finger ran all around the screen. All right, um, so maybe maybe I'll just show you how I created that so that you know how to create a recipe right now because this is what this is about. So if if I wanted something where a student would typically have to run their finger all around the screen to make the fireworks go off, but when we were talking about a switch user that's going to touch one switch, I'm going to say create a recipe. And I have to name the recipe and I'm going to call this one sensory light box. because I already had the fireworks one. Okay. Um, and then I need to assign a switch. So that could be the full screen. If the child's motivated to touch the screen and watch those fireworks, um, if they want to look at it but not touch the screen and touch their switch, you could choose one of these other, um, other switches, scan or select. Okay. So you just select whatever switch you want and then uh, you say that you want a custom gesture, okay? So you see right towards the, the third one from the bottom is custom gesture. And now I'm going to go all over the screen and then say stop. And that'll, that's what gesture will happen. If you don't like what you did, you can record again and say stop and then save. So anytime I launch this recipe, um, you can also have a timeout you see at the bottom if you want it to only happen a few times and then stop after a certain amount of time so that recipe doesn't keep going, um, you can do that, but I'm going to leave that alone. So now you see sensory light box created and so I could either now choose the fireworks or the sensory light box um, to run this via switch. So let's we already launched the fireworks one, so we'll go ahead with that one. And I'm going to swipe down, and I have the fireworks app right there. I'm just going to say resume show. And now I remember I have to triple click my home button to get this started. And touch my switch. Oh. Let's go back and see what I did. Okay, there we go. Now that I closed it out. Okay, what's nice is you can also use the screen to touch. So if you're supporting something went wrong and you need to fix something, you can do that. So now I, I touch it and it goes all over the screen with that, that custom gesture. You can see that dot. I'm not sure if you can, but there's a on my end, I can see a dot moving around with the fireworks. I'm going to touch the switch one more time. And if somebody's not seeing the fireworks, let me know. I'm seeing it on both my screens, so I think you should be seeing it. So each time I touch the switch, the fireworks go off. Sensory light box, I'm going to turn off the switch. One, two, three. Sensory light box can be kind of nice because you have lots of choices of different things. So if they want the volcano or the um, different the bubbles, different things they can choose. 
but the action will still be the same. The switch is still set up. So really, within one activity, you can have uh, multiple things happening within just this one app. I mean, they can choose multiple things. Okay, so let's get to uh, some more complex activities that you can do with uh, a recipe. Um, and that would be, let's go back to the PowerPoint. We did the five, oops. So I'm hoping you guys can still hear me and see my screen. I just switched to the sensory light box and fireworks slide. I just got a um, message on my computer that there was an error and it might not be displaying. So I'm hoping you can see the screen. Okay, so before we get to the app-driven toys that I want to talk about, um, what about an app that um, is a book app but maybe has some more activities going on? Um, so I did this for one student where it was kind of partner some shared reading with another student. And so one student who was able to use their finger to touch the iPad actually did some of the turning pages, but the other student was able to do some of the activities by me creating one recipe that worked well on multiple pages of this app. So that was kind of fun. So I'm going to show you on my iPad the monster. Um, Let's see, the monster at the end of the book is the app, and I think there's two books like this, and show you the easy custom gesture I created that uh, worked well for partnered reading. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And we're still within the setting because I want to show you how I'm going to launch monster. All right, so we've got that launched. We're going to go to our app. Another monster at the end of this book. And when those uh, arrows light up, that means they can turn the page. Oh, look at that. I promise I'll just take you through maybe two, two or three pages. Yeah. my recipe right at the beginning. I could have, but I'm launching it right now. Okay, here we go. Launching the recipe, the monster recipe. Now when I touch my switch, see what happens. Okay, the sound is going to be off. Okay, so now the child would touch their switch. Oops. So did you guys see some dots coming up where the, the blocks are being knocked down? Okay, so there were about three pages that worked well for the, this one motion. It was basically tapping all over the screen uh, because that's what the 
needed to happen. Um, but this student, uh, we could have set it up where they turned the page or they interacted with the story. Typically, a recipe works well when you're going to have uh, kind of similar things happening on each page. Uh, but this was one where we could do a lot of different touches all over the screen and still um, have things happening uh, that we wanted to happen. Okay, so there's we have a new toy um, in the lending library at Setsi. We have two of these. And they're an app-driven toy that is very cool, Lightning McQueen. And typically, our students who are switch users would not be able to access this. Um, but because of recipes, you can create some recipes where the student can access it really quite well. Um, I was practicing it again this weekend with my six-year-old and his friend, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and again, the thing about recipes is that you can also partner so that a partner could do some functions and then the switch user could do some as well. So a student could be holding the iPad with the app control, and then the, the, student, the other student could have their switch and also be controlling some functions. So how would I set this up? I'm going to first, let's take a look at a little video of, of uh, me at home just trying out what I need to touch on the iPad in order to uh, make things happen for this car and we can see what the car does. I'm hoping it's oriented correctly. If not, you might need to turn sideways to see this video. It should be coming, the sound should be coming through your computer screen, or I mean your computer speakers. Um, so I'm going to turn my volume down. So I'm going to take a look at the screen for um, the Sphero Lightning McQueen app and just figure out how to control the car. And so when I push here. So, so the, um, the movie is, the little video is sideways. Um, so you can see I'm coming from the, the left-hand side, at least on my screen. And normally that would be right in, in front of you. So here we go. And notice the car goes. When I push the reverse and go. So it's going to start to reverse. And when I come back and say I want to do a donut, I think I push, I'm pushing here and here, and it does a donut. So I know there are three recipes I could make that would be pretty cool to go by pushing here. To reverse by having uh, by pushing both in the circle and the reverse, and then a donut by pushing in the circle and reverse. So when we make recipes, we are going to create recipes that do all three of those functions. Okay, for those of you who were unable to hear the video, um, I was basically exploring how. Let me use my little pointer here or my little arrow, I was exploring how if, if I touched in the circle, the car would go. If I touched the reverse and in the circle, the car would reverse. If I touched in the circle and the donut, it would then do a donut. And so those are some of the functions that I, or recipes I need to create with some custom, custom gestures. So I, um, had my tracing paper that I put over my iPad. And now I just have a little video of how I created that. So hopefully the sound is OK for you guys to hear. I'm going to try to turn it up a little more for those of you who are having trouble hearing through your own speakers. And we'll see if this works. In order to create the three functions that I talked about, um, and have switches control them, I need to use uh, some tracing paper. So I have my tracing paper here, and I put it over the app. I'm going to turn it over this way. And I can still see through it, so I can see those controls. And then I could go ahead and mark where I want my switches to be activated. 
That's like my plain black and adding a vendor in there. So I could put I a dot, dot here, here and put number one. one. That's going to be my first my switch first for go. go. I could I put, put a dot, dot up, up here, here and a and dot, dot here. here. That's going to be two. two. Switch two. two. At the same time, same touching time those two areas. areas. And that's going to be my reverse. reverse. And then and I could, I could again, again just be within, within the, circle the circle and, and within, within the, the, the donut, donut control there, there and put a three. three. And that's and my that's third my switch. switch. Okay, so this is just a picture. I've ended up with my dots. Switch one is going to just press within the circle. Switch two is going to uh, press the reverse and within the circle. And then switch three would be set up to uh, do a donut. So in the circle and on the donut. And so that's basically how you would set that up. Um, so if I go, let me see if I can display, I'm using another iPad now um, just to show you that I set those up, but I need to go ahead and launch this video again. So you're going to see my, I think you're going to see my face first, and then I'm going to start the iPad. Okay, hold on one minute. Share. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I'm within, within general, within accessibility, under switch control, I go to my recipes, and you can see how I have go, reverse, and donut. And so basically, um, as I showed you how to create a recipe, I just touched the screen in those areas of, that I needed to in order to make that action happen. And the iPad's recording that gesture, storing it under Go, Reverse, and Donut. And so I have those. Now, I have been told that you can launch multiple recipes at a time. I haven't been able to do that. So I'm still looking for some good information on, on how I launch more than one recipe. But still, it was a lot of fun for the kids. If I just launched the Donut recipe, that was so fun to do over and over again because the car just sped forward, did a donut, and ended up in a different place. We touched it again, did it again. So it didn't feel like the same action. Um, go might have been a little hard because you get stuck, and then someone might have to reverse if you're just going forward and then you, and then you eventually hit something. So um, that's something to consider. The donut is by far the funnest one to set up. Um, and I should have taken video of the kids doing that so I could show you, but this shows you where it's set up within um, Switch Control. Do you guys have any questions about how to set that up? Or is this making sense? Let me know in the chat if, um, if there's any questions. Now, if you decide to check this out from uh, the Special Ed Tech Center, um, I need to make a little list, and I'll add it to the PowerPoint before I send it out, uh, because we don't have this packaged with the car, the interface, the switch, um, all together, and the iPad. You need to ask for all of those items, because we don't want to hold up an iPad just sitting here with Lightning if, if it, he's not checked out. So um, I will make sure to make a slide if you want to check out Lightning McQueen and set this up for your student, what things that you would need in order to do that. And then um, you can either call me to help for help setting up, or um, I'm going to be having some of videos on YouTube on how to set it up and use it. OK, so um, it doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, it, it is very cool and fun. You know, we've used the switch toys with our students over and over again, the walking dog and the, the penguin um, game. Um, but it's fun to have different kinds of toys for our students to use that, that others are using um, and things that they can partner with others to do. Um, another one would be the Sphero Ball. And so I've used this one before as well. What you're really looking for is a very simple 
app interface. And sometimes these app-driven toys don't even let you get into the, um, into the app itself until you have the device. So you can't even see what the screen's going to look like. And that's very critical because some are harder than others. Um, there's some drones that have a very simple interface. And I've seen folks set up um, switches with drones using recipes. Um, but you have to know what that the screen is going to look like. So you can look up, um, like I usually go to Google Images, and I'm looking up the app, and you see screenshots of what it's going to look like. You don't want something that's a dynamic display and that you touch one thing and it goes to a different screen. You want something that's a static screen, like the Lightning uh, McQueen screen or this uh, Sphero screen stays the same. It's just uh, you know directionality, the little uh, toggle there. So. Um, here I've just set, mentioned some things about selecting apps, and that's a static screen. Also repeat gestures. Um, so like the, the monster at the end of the book, um, there's a few pages where that recipe would not have worked. And so the partner reading with the student might have to do some of the functions on some of the pages. But um, it's nice if you have repeated gestures so that you can uh, set up the recipe and then use that same switch over and over to, in, to interact with other different things. Let's see. So I have a, just one more bonus recipe on pausing and playing music. Um, some of you might have an interface that's already set up to do that um, on its own. But here you can set up um, pausing and playing music if your interface does not have that function. So that's pretty much it. Um, let's see. I'll just show you the resource, if I can find it, that I'm going to send you. just has some links for you to explore recipes here and how to create them step by step. For those of you who would like that, here's some step by step kind of directions. And I learned this from Laurel Buell. She's the one that had the Lightning McQueen car and the, uh, the uh, drone at closing the gap last year. And so she kind of introduced us to this. Luis Perez has a nice tutorial on recipes and then some other um, resources there. Well, if there are no other questions, uh, we can end a little early today. And I will send out this resource. Thanks for joining, and feel free to email if you have any questions on this.